everybody, I'm Violetta's Grace and Aquan, aka Teacher Grace. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do my first sit down, well stand up, tutorial on how to learn a new piece of music. And I'm doing this as part of a bop to school giveaway! <laughs> Yay! Rules on how to enter at the end. So today, I'm going to teach you how to play box musette in D major. This was originally written for uh, piano, but Celie Constance, Celie Brown, rearranged it for violin and piano. So let's start. This is probably legit one of my favorite pieces to teach. It hits everything I'm looking for in a song at the end of book one, or I would say in between minuet two and minuet three in book one, because I feel like after minuet two, it becomes easy. The happy farmer is easy, minuet three is easy, and then all of a sudden the gavotte is like, oh my god! The gavotte technically is like a level two piece in a lot of organizations. I like to put in this musette either while they're doing book one as a little extra motivator or for competitions or in between book one and book two. The things that we will address in this piece will be bow distribution, chromatics, which means for my kids and who are beginners, it's different color strips or half steps and whole steps, anything with accidentals, AKA sharps, naturals, and flyouts. When you learn it my way, we use a lot of fourth finger and a lot of interesting bowings. It has access on the off beats. That is great. I love doing those. I love training my kids to do those. It has lots of string crossings, which is great. I tend to teach my kids different bowings in this one. I make them look at it first um, the way Brown suggests, and then I give them my bowing, which is a little different. I think a tiny bit harder, which is great because I want it to be a little harder. <laughs> I want them. I want my kids to overcome stuff and be stimulated and challenged. All right, so let's start. So the first thing I do is tell my kids to look through the music. So I tell them to grab their brute facts. Brute facts are anything that just pops out on the page right at you, much like brute force. Not a lot of calculating or thinking, just out there. So the first thing my kids usually notice is that the first two lines start the same. The last two lines are the same as the first two lines. So technically, this entire song, even though it's seven lines, is technically only five lines because two of them repeat. The second thing that they usually notice are all the accents on everything that's usually black, like accidental 16 notes and stuff like that. So I usually have a kid go, ah! Did you guys? And then we go through it like this and they're like, they're, they calm down. Number three is please notice the repeats. And then the next thing is notice all the dots. So the way I tell my kids how to play the dots um, when they're on eighth notes is to make them marcato strokes. This way we work on not staccato or spiccato because technically that's a bow, different bow technique. I know in Suzuki book one, a lot of people like to interchange those words like they mean something else. It, it doesn't. Staccato and spiccato are actual bow They can actually be bow techniques, so I call them dots. Dots literally just means separate. So I use these as a tool not to teach them spiccato or staccato. I use dots to teach them very early on marcato strokes, full bow, full bow or half bow, half bow, depending on the song. So let's start. So first, please notice the accent. So I tell my kids to start with their catch, their collets, and then half, half, and my kids use a fourth finger. Now, accent. You can do zero if you want, but I like to be prepared for the string crossing. And then another string crossing, half, half, because in this measure, it is 16 eighth, there's two ways to do this. You can do little bow and then half bow, half, half. But I don't like this because it doesn't prepare you for the next measure, which you need to be at the tip. This is what Celie Brown suggests. I don't do that, but that is an option. I like to say half, half, whole bow, because now the shortest note is a 16 note and the longest note is the eighth note. Ratio wise, it's two to one, and we use the bow the same way. Half, half, whole bow, whole bow, whole bow. Half, whole bow, sustain, sustain, sound. And then half, half, and that's the marcata stroke. It's a quick start, quick finish, quick start, quick finish. And then we do E and A. Same thing with the accent. Oh, if you guys want to know how to do accents or how to do marcato, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm just gonna assume that by this time, most people have learned that in Suzuki book one. All right, here we go. 
So same thing, half, half, oboe, and then I do half, half. this is because the last measure now has an eighth note, two eighth notes, and a quarter note. So a great thing to do here is instead of using half-half and then whole bow, ratio proportion bow distribution, I like to make my kids use different bow speeds. So if you do whole bow, whole bow, and then whole bow, they have to now use two different bow speeds to accommodate the two different rhythms with the same amount of bow. Second time is super, the retake is super important because the composer has asked for it to be piano the second time. So we have to land gracefully. So obviously there's many ways to do this. I like to do proportionate bowing, so the same thing but smaller. So instead of this becoming your full bow, this becomes your full bow. I'll start from the measure before. Now we go to the quarter bow. To the three quarter. here crescendo to the frog now we're at the frog where we can be ready for the last two measures which are light forte and then another retake to a down bow but this time we go to mezzo forte so this is a great opportunity for students of all different levels to practice the four gradients of dynamics at this level which is piano mezzo piano mezzo forte forte and making sure that it does clearly sound different or at least you try and make the attempt for them to all sound different. So now we're at a mezzo forte. So you make sure that this is loud. Straight low, and then a little, just a tiny bit less. So I do whole bow here, same as before, and then catch. You can do 4-4. Four, four. I do that with kids who are really struggling with the four finger so they get that exercise. With kids who don't, need the fourth finger exercise, you can do zero, zero. Now there's also two ways to do the bow. You can do the ratio bowing, which is eighth note half, quarter note whole. I like to have my kids practice the accent at the tip as much as possible, so I have them do the bow speed distribution. And, and then to make them uncomfortable, you can do whole bow here. Here, if your kid is struggling with, if you, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I was like talking to other teachers right now, but if you're struggling with like a straight bow, this is a great exercise because this has no dots, it's supposed to be connected. You can do this measure with full bow. I like specifically working on the upper half because most kids have trouble with the upper half. So I teach it like, Like that, because here, and then up, up, down. I like changing the bowing a little bit on them. And sometimes my kids actually, when they repeat something multiple times, they forget which one they're on. So the different bowings, make sure that they keep track of which measure that they're on. Did that make sense? Did I grammatically say that sentence correctly? <laughs> okay, so that's bowing one. This is bowing two. If you want to do that, I wait for that for the second half. I did two ups. That way they can now practice two ups. Accent. Accent. So that's the second bowing I like to do. So what happens is it's, every student is a case by case. Every person is a case by case. So you can have in a whole range of different kinds of bows, different kind of bow strokes, different kind of bow distribution, and really make this piece your own. So what I do is for the advanced kids, because there's a repeat, I mix these bowings to keep them entertained and challenged. Most people who know this piece is going to comment that there's a piano in the measure three of line three.
Um, I feel like sometimes the bow stroke is worth it as long as they do the piano. Sometimes they, I encourage the piano. Once again, it's a, it's a case by case basis based on what the student needs. So if you're a straight bow person and you want to practice big sound with straight bow, you can cross that out and wait for the second half because we're going to be quiet in the second half anyway. So you can do whatever floats your boat, basically. So how about this time I'll just do it the way I teach my basic, basic beginners, okay? Mezzo forte, mezzo forte. Accent, accent, accent. Now, quiet. Straight bow here. Now two up, ups. Accent. Hobo, hobo. And then the second time, a little quiet. This line is very special because we have a D sharp. D sharp is really special because it moves not the middle finger like the C natural, G naturals, but it moves the weakest finger. Most people think that the pinky is the weakest finger. Uh-uh, it's the shortest finger, honey. Short doesn't mean weak. It's weaker than the first and second finger, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't mean it's weak. Do me a favor, go to a, go to a piano, a flat surface right now, and put your hand like this on a flat surface. <laughs> I'm gonna use my leg as a flat surface. Move your thumb up and down. Move your index finger up and down. Move your pinky up and down. Move your fourth finger up and down. Without contorting. Lots of kids try to like contort. Without lifting any of the other fingers, lift only the fourth finger up and down. It's quite difficult, most people can't do it. It's because the weakest finger is the most dependent finger. So to move that to a D sharp, that's that's great exercise. So the way I like to train that is to have them do this. If you follow Annalie, one of my students, Annalie on Instagram, you know that she had to go through what was called third finger rehab. This exercise, I created the third finger rehab. This is one of the exercises of my third finger rehab as a result of my accent as well. So you keep your fourth finger a little high to almost at F natural, and then you make your third finger go up. Third finger go down, down. So basically what they're practicing is how to strengthen the muscles on the sides instead of up and down motion. But do you see how the fourth finger is moving with it? Because they're dependent, they're, the nerves are interlinked. So the way I have them practice is keep it here and move it down. And then when they get a little better, And then the really hard one is this one. To be able to move your third finger back and forth with the fourth finger on the A or the A sharp. I like to exercise my kids' minds and their dexterity a lot. So this is a great, this is a great song for that. So now let's start from line five. We start piano. Now crescendo, the way we do that is little bow, now more bow to the half. Now these are dots. Half, half step third finger, which is also that raised third finger. Hobo, hobo, straight bow. That's the marcato stroke. And then hobo, straight bow, hobo, straight bow. Now what you're gonna see, most kids will be, that will happen, like automatically. So to make this worth it, is to make sure they go to the tip straight. If they cannot, then make sure that they can at least get to the middle straight, to the frog, middle straight. If you can't do the whole bow, I think whole bow is a better exercise, but if you don't have time for it or the kids are just not advanced enough for it, then you can do half bow. Just make sure there's a clear stop and a clear beginning. That's bow distribution with bow speed. Gotta love this piece. Gotta love this piece. And then we're back to line one. Or students who are really struggling 
with their upper half. I like to do it in the upper half, but today we're gonna pretend we're doing it for our younger students, so. Now, we're gonna do mezzo piano the second time. So we practice the little cue. So instead of piano, we're gonna do a little loud, but not as loud as a mezzo forte or Forte. I'm hoping this mic is good enough to pick up those subtle differences. Now we're going to do mezzo forte. Big sound. Big. Now we go. I'm going to go to a quarter mark. So here, because we're going to be quieter, for sure, fourth finger, if you hadn't used zero before. And now even quieter. who are over the age of nine and you are starting to feed him little feed them I'm thinking about a specific student feed them third position little by little but we're gonna go back and pretend like this for my one of my babies and we're gonna do it from the last two measures of line five And then there's a decay at the end. So I'm um, sorry. I say oh when you're teaching a beginner and like you literally just taught them accents. Sometimes they <laughs> over they overcompensate. So what I say is think about oh because oh has a definitive beginning, but it decays and it's round. It's a very round sound. Oh, I'll, I'll do to the end when you close your mouth. Now we do the same thing when we're playing. Oh, release, street ball. the fourth finger drilled in, accent, accent with the fourth finger, and if you have a kid over the age of like what, let's say eight, nine, and you have to start teaching them vibrato, this is a great place to add in a little vibrato here and there on the long notes. Thank you so much for watching, and as promised, here are the giveaway rules. So Johnson Street and I want to do this giveaway for students going back to school. Three levels of necessity. So level one will be the 10 little classics. This is one of my favorite books to teach out of. My kids learn this book on top of the Suzuki books. We compete with the songs in here. It's really fun. So level two is for the intermediate violinists. These are two of my favorite pieces. So it's the Bach Air and the Bach Arioso. These pieces are performed all the time. I've been playing them at gigs for years. I play them at you know weddings, I play them at church. These are also great encore material, and it is perfect for the intermediate level, you know, where you can't, you know, you're not doing the Tchaikovsky and stuff like that yet, but you want to work on your vibrato, your phrasing. This is perfect even for educational purposes. So level three is for my advanced violinists, my inner scholars, and that is the Urtex Baron Rider box solo sonatas and partitas. You guys, this is hella expensive. I'm so happy. Thank you, Johnson, for giving this as a giveaway. Um, originally it was gonna be the Galamian, and I was like, can we pretty, 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 pretty please do this? Because the Galamian, I'll show you the Galamian. The international edition is fantastic, but it's heavily edited by Galamian, one of the greatest pedagogues that lived. So the genius part of this edition back then was that they included the manuscript so you can flip back and forth and see what Bach wanted and what is what can be considered like a standard way to play um, or a suggested way to play by the editor. So let me tell you, for years, I actually went like hardcore Baroque. For like two years, I was like, you know, I was gonna restore my violin to like Baroque settings. I was like, don't even talk to me about editions. I eat, slept, ate, drank manuscript for two years. So I really appreciate the manuscript, but it's, it's pretty hard to read, to be completely honest. So when Baron Rider came out with this, I was like, yeah! So this is basically a printed manuscript. What I love about the Baron Rider, I'm a huge Baron Rider girl. If I could afford it, I would have every piece in this world Baron Rider. But 
I can't, so I shan't. What I like about the Baron Writer is the print is so big that you can actually like write your notes because I like to write a lot of notes sometimes. Not just fingerings and bowings, but the intention of what I want to do, like the analysis sometimes. And my kids, because you know, my kids start, I start my kids on Bach as soon as they finish their first concert student concerto, not the size, not anything from, you know, Suzuki. Once they finish the Vivaldi seasons and they're entering into Viotti and they finish Accolade and, you know, stuff like that, I like to have my kids start on the box solo sonatas and partitas because I don't think there's there's going to be a better education than from Bach himself, especially for solo violin. The architecture, the structure, the polyphony, the phrasing, the sheer genius that comes out of this, I feel like it gives kids great tools to advance intellectually as well as musically. And my kids would have no problem reading out of something with the notes this large. It is fantastic. In case someone doesn't know what urtex means, urtex basically means organic. As one of my kids put it, untouched by by humans. It's touched a little bit because we obviously printed it. So the urtex is the composer's intention with that human manipulation in the form of addition. This is bomb. Um, I will put the links for all three of these below. And a little extra gift from Johnson is every giveaway, all three giveaways will come with gift wrapping paper, manuscript gift wrapping paper, and a Oh, manuscript rosin. This is bomb. This is synthetic rosin where there's a hologram on the bottom. So to enter into this box to school giveaway, there are three simple rules. One, subscribe. Subscribe to my channel and subscribe to Johnson Strings. The links are in the description box below. Number two, follow us on Instagram. Grayson Aquan and Johnson Strings. And number three, leave us comments. Comment down below saying, I subscribe, Grace, this is my entry. And let me know which one of the giveaways you want to enter into, one, two, or three. There are no limit to entries. So leave me comments here. Leave me comments on my Instagram page. And if you don't know which one to enter into, leave me a little note saying like, I'm playing this song. Am I okay to get Dario so in air? And I'll respond back. So when are these giveaways ending? The beginner level, the 10 little classics, this giveaway will end on Thursday the 29th. The intermediate Bach and Ario, so will end Friday the 30th. This is all in August. And the advanced level will end the last day of August, which is the 31st, right before September. Because for me, all my classes always started the day after Labor Day, which is September. So I want everyone to win and I want these all mailed out so you guys can have this. Enjoy it for your school year. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to enter into the giveaway and I will see you next time. Peace.